Get ready for the most shocking survivor twist ever. I'm a little bit leery. It might be kind of a twist. Some sort of a war of the races kind of thing going on. CBS is doing something we never thought we'd see. Four tribes of different ethnic backgrounds going head to head. It's the kind of thing everybody wonders about and everybody talks about, but never publicly. When you watch the show, you'll see actually it's a very positive thing we're doing. How will it change the game and how will America respond? Only TV Guide Channel went to the Cook Islands to find out everything you want to know. Plus, we'll show you the hidden gem in the South Pacific where the new Survivor will be played. Check out the biggest, boldest tribal council in Survivor history. You're not going to believe how cool this is. We'll reveal an exclusive sneak peek of a real Cook Islands challenge. And season 13 will be a lucky number for one of these 20 new castaways. Arr, I hope so. Let's see what I'm really made of. We want to like, start the game, so we're ready. I'm doing this. You know, I'm going to win it. Light, cameras, action. This is Survivor Cook Islands Preview. Mm. It's going to be a season unlike anything we've ever done before. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Survivor Cook Islands Preview. I'm Sari Fields from Survivor Panama XL Island. It seems like only yesterday when I made my way to the final four. And now it's time for a whole new batch of castaways. Over the next hour, we'll reveal everything you want to know about the new season. From the players to the challenges, and only TV Guide Channel had crews on location, so this is your sole source of all things Survivor. First up, let's head to the stunning new location, the Cook Islands, and find out more about this season's huge twist. The South Pacific has become a favorite of the crew. For the show's 13th season, Survivor is heading to the Cook Islands, one of the most stunning places in the world. From an aesthetic point of view, it's as beautiful as anywhere we've ever been. It was like epic. In the middle of the ocean, this atoll of a lagoon that's about 10 or 15 feet deep. And just outside, it's 1,000 feet deep. The water is four different colors of blue. You can see forever. The history with Captain Cook, Mutiny on the Bounty, gives you some great, great stories here. The mutiny was made famous in literature, plus an Oscar-winning film but Survivor is poised to make just as big an impact on the Cook Islands with a very controversial way of dividing the contestants. This year, there will be four tribes split by ethnicity, with Caucasian, African American, Asian American, and Hispanic teams squaring off against each other. There's a pretty much very balanced and equal amount of races here. So I think it's, this is going to be real interesting, how we'll all be able to work together. A little microcosm of America right here. I think it's great to see so many diverse faces. I hope, uh, I'm a little bit leery, it might be kind of a twist, some sort of a war of the races kind of thing going on. With the whole notion came from the fact that we were criticized so often for having a, a, a show that was not ethnically diverse. And the reason for that is that the people who apply are basically white, Caucasian. That's 80% of our applicants. I thought to myself, that's an interesting way to start it. Let people obviously be in their own ethnic tribes, knowing that, of course, Survivor mixes up over and over and over. And as a result, we found this really fresh cast of people who aren't Survivor addicts. They really don't know the show that well, but they thought the adventure sounded cool. Of course, this bold move is bound to raise a few eyebrows. I think one of the things that makes it so appealing for me is the fact that it is a touchy subject. It's the kind of thing everybody wonders about and everybody talks about, but never publicly. The twist this year for Survivor is obviously provocative. Uh, we definitely need to see how it is executed in order to comment on its social impact. Well, I think it causes us to still think of uh, the differences that exist among different races rather than the commonalities. I have a problem with this. You know, for years we've been laboring to be integrated, to be an integrated society. Now we're going to pit one group against the other. It doesn't speak very well. It'll be interesting to see how it plays out. We have a gold standard of integrity. And I think when you watch the show, you'll see 
Asian is a very positive thing we're doing. At a certain point, I don't think people are going to care if you're Asian American or Hispanic. They're going to care if I can trust you or can I not. Are you helping or are you hindering? Are you a pain in the ass or are you an asset? This season is also keeping some survivor traditions alive, including the Exile Island twist from last season and a marooning of the cast that harkens all the way back to the very first survivor. Once we had the ethnic groupings, it really made us feel like we were starting over, like the show was birthing again. And we went back and looked at season one and we looked at the open of me on a boat with all these people salvaging stuff off the boat and thought, God, that was really exciting. We should just do it again. Man, that was an exciting open. And that's just the beginning. Later, TV Guide Channel was on location for an exclusive challenge test. You can only see it here, so you won't want to miss it. But up next... I definitely expect to win. It's checkmate. <laughs> we'll check out two of the four tribes competing for the million-dollar prize. Don't go anywhere. Survivor Cook Island's preview will be right back. Welcome back to Survivor Cook Island's preview. I'm Sari Fields from Survivor Panama Exile Island. Before the break, we told you about the shocking twist shaking things up in the Cook Islands this season. Now it's time to meet the folks taking part in the game, starting with the I2 Talkie tribe. I've had a lot of challenges in my life, so you know, this would be another challenge. Christina, a 14-year veteran of the police force, has already proven how tough she can be. I was shot in my arm. I fractured both my humerus and my radius. And when they fixed it and put plates and pins in it, they said, well, you might not be able to get your hand back. I couldn't open my hand. After they said that, in my mind, I said, no, that's not the way it's going to happen. <laughs> and I opened my hand. And within a year and a month, I came back to work full time. Christina, to me, seems like she has a real shot at winning this game. Punky pro volleyball player JP knows what to expect from the producers. They've been screwing it with us since we've gotten here, so it's a given. I'm, I'm ready to be messed with. After losing his mother at age six and his father last year, this California native should be well prepared for the emotional turmoil of the game. I took care of my dad all the way until he passed away literally in front of me. I think that grew. I grew in character for that. 25-year-old surfer Oscar, known as Oz, heads to the Cook Islands with a lifelong love affair with the water. I used to do diving when I was in high school, and anytime I can find something really tall to dive off of, I'd do anything I can to do it. Ozzy's another guy I actually think could win this game. I can't wait to get out on location and just start the show. Cecilia, a risk consultant from Oakland, California, wasted no time in getting used to her Cook Island surroundings. I think we're going to be OK. It's just a matter of not sitting around and going out and getting it. And hopefully, we have a team that is going to do that and not just sit around and wait for Mana to fall from the sky. Cecilia has no chance of winning this game. That's what I think. But I think she's going to be an asset because of her attitude. You know, I'm heavy metal. <laughs> Wrestler, guitarist, former Marine. Survivor has never had a contestant quite like Billy Garcia. I have black belts in both karate and judo, but my favorite uh, martial art is actually uh, wrestling. That's my thing. He just seems extremely likable. It'd be hard to vote him out, especially early. I think he'll be around for a while. And I'll just play human chess with these guys. Once that, that king goes down, it's checkmate. <laughs> Next up is the Manahiki tribe, which features an actress, a jazz player, a morning show makeup artist, and a young man who happens to be one of Jeff Probst's favorites this season. Hmm. Let's see what I'm really made of. If any experience can test the medal of this 26-year-old shoe salesman, it's Survivor. I'm not going to be the bossy type. I'm just going to be a hard worker. He just has a way about him that's extremely likable. I'll make my moves when I need to make my moves, but I'm not going to come off the bat ranting and raving like some do. I would hate to see him leave early. South Carolina mother of two, Stephanie Favor, is one of the more intense Survivor fans in the Cook Islands cast. I had auditioned three times. So the third time, I went in and I said, the third time's a charm. I said, you need to call me. Stephanie's been through a lot of military training. She's getting her second college degree. She's very, she really applies herself. A Cook Islands castaway with a TV connection is Stephanie's tribe mate, Rebecca. I'm a makeup artist for The View, and Elizabeth Hasselbeck from season two is um, 
is one of the people that I work on daily. You know, I come from a tough ship, basically, where I'm dealing with a lot of celebrities and a lot of divas. You have to be able to finagle and to be able to not offend anyone, but at the same time, get what you need from that person. A woman who can hold her own, it's something you need out here. Single mom Sundra might look familiar to you. She's appeared on episodes of CSI Miami, Strong Medicine, and Sex in the City. Sundra says she has a guardian angel with her in the Cook Islands, her five-year-old son, Carson. He motivates why I'm here and why I'll stay in it and what will get me through tough days when I feel like I just want to get voted the hell off. Another entertainer bringing his talents to Cook Islands is professional jazz musician Sekou Bunch. I think on his tribe initially, he'll probably be one of the leaders, mainly because of age and experience. As the elder statesman among the castaways, Seiko is ready to bring his street smarts to the island. I'm going to use all of my survival and experience skills growing up in the city. I've been in some poisonous neighborhoods. <laughs> I'm in some bad neighborhoods, dude. Still to come, only TV Guide can introduce you to the 10 other castaways vying to become sole survivor in the Cook Islands. Mm. Who has what it takes? Place your bets later in the show. But up next... Hey, I'm Jeff Probst. Coming up, I'll give you a tour of Tribal Council for Survivor Cook Islands. Welcome back to Survivor Cook Islands Preview. I'm Sari Fields from Survivor Panama XL Island. Remember the incredible Tribal Council cave during my season? Well, I can tell you that was an overwhelmingly creepy and very hot place. This time around, Survivor's pulling out all the stops with their biggest Tribal Council undertaking ever. All right, we are just outside of Tribal Council. Behind me is the entrance that the Survivors will actually walk down as they're coming into Tribal Council. You're not going to believe how cool this is. Come on. So when we got here, there was absolutely nothing on this piece of land and the incredible Survivor Art Department constructed a 100-foot-long shipwreck. The masts are 70 feet tall. They weigh about three tons each. There are three of them. And as you take a look around and see some of the nooks and crannies, this is, without question, the biggest build we've ever done for Tribal with the most detail. And it is stunning to be here. This is... Uh, Six weeks, 12 guys nonstop to build this, not including the design. Any of the materials we had to get, which is a lot of timber, came from New Zealand, because there's nothing on the island. This is the area where the survivors sit. You can see all the detail behind me of the shipwreck and the torches. And then we have the voting area. Everything is has a nautical theme this season. We've got the quill, and uh, you take the quill out, you write the person's name down, you fold it up, and the great thing is whenever possible, we like to have the survivors in the same shot. So over the shoulder of the person voting somebody out is the person they're voting out. And you put it in a little pouch this season, not a big container, but a nice little leather pouch, and you're done. And this is the snuffer for the Cook Islands, the dreaded snuffer that means you are out of the game and your shot at a million dollars is gone. We have 20 people this season going to be a lot of snuffing going on. That pretty much wraps up the tour of Tribal Council. Hope you enjoyed it. I can promise you this. It's going to be a season unlike anything we've ever done before. See you later. Thanks, Jeff. I hope I never have to visit Tribal Council again. Now, as a former contestant, I know how tough this game can be on the players. But one thing you might not know is what the various journalists go through to give you the scoop on the Survivor experience, including the TV Guide channel. A group of journalists goes at the beginning of each season of Survivor. <laughs> It's a fantastic experience for the journalists because we get to see firsthand what the survivors go through. Survivor is all about the islands. The only way reporters and crews, as well as contestants, can get around is by boat. Getting to the Cook Islands involves three planes and takes about 12 hours. You start out flying from Los Angeles. You fly to Papiete, Tahiti. It's about nine hours. Then you have a layover there and take another flight to Rarotonga, which is the biggest island in the Cooks. Then you take a puddle jumper 
to an island called Aitutaki. From early morning interviews to long shoot days in 100 degree heat, reporters have to deal with nature at its best and its worst. You just have to think, you know what, I'm going to Survivor. I'm not going to be comfortable all the time. Here we go. Up next. It'll be interesting to see if they hold that against me. Find out what Jonathan has to hide and meet his four tribe mates when Survivor Cook Island's preview returns. Welcome back to Survivor Cook Island's preview. I'm Sari Fields, and you might remember me as the woman who overcame a fear of leaves on Survivor Exile Island. Now it's time to introduce you to the Rorotunga tribe. Meet Survivor's first ever Oscar nominee, some male and female eye candy, plus a young woman who should have no trouble making fire, unlike myself. Better watch out, Flick of Flame. Will Fire Dancer and Roller Derby Queen Jessica, AKA Flick of Flame, be able to check her Survivor competition out of the running? Jessica, who looks a lot like Courtney from last season. To have another fire performer, I'm like, that's cool, at least we're artists. If she can get some momentum, she'll probably be around for a while. Can't win the game. 28-year-old Adam, a salesman from San Diego, says he's head and well-muscled shoulders above the others in Cook Island. I think that's one of my advantages. I think I'm physically, um, you know, better than most of the other con contestants. Adam, not gonna win this game. He'll probably want to punch me for saying that. It plays on another level that he may just not be into or may not have the skills yet, but it's a dicey social game. I'm not really worried about it, though, in general. I'll, I'll persevere. Ready. And ready she is. Parvati might look like a lightweight, but she's already developed a tough skin in the boxing ring. I've done martial arts ever since I was little, and uh, I just love to try new things. I was like, oh, boxing sounds fun. And then I just got involved in like training for competitive matches. As a straight-A student and the youngest player, 23-year-old Candace has a take-charge personality that should serve her well in the game. If I were picking people who have a shot at winning, I'd put Candace on that list. I played sports. I love to work out. So, I mean, I've got outdoor experience. My parents always used to tell me when I was little, um, Candace, you have to learn how to let somebody else win sometimes because I always wanted to, you know, be first place. I think that pisses people off sometimes. <laughs> and finally, meet Jonathan. You know, some of these guys are obviously like super workout psychos, you know, muscles on the muscles. And if you have nothing but muscle on you, well, that's all you can lose is muscle, you know, and it's going to be more debilitating to them than to a fat old guy like me. Jonathan Penner is one of my favorites. Not necessarily likable. I hope he lasts a while. I think he'll create some good stories. Jonathan Penner. He's a uh, script writer. He's an uh, Academy Award nominee for short film. If I ever get an obituary, that'll be like, you know, it'll either be a Survivor contestant or Oscar nominee. Maybe both. World's only Survivor contestant Oscar nominee. Jonathan Penner died. Later, there's one more tribe to come, and TV Guide Channel is the only place you'll hear this no holds barred interview with Jeff Probst. He's a super likable guy. She would fight to stay in this game. If I had to guess, we'd be gone early. Which castaway is Jeff talking about? Find out when Survivor Cook Island's preview returns. Welcome back to Survivor Cook Island's preview. I'm Sari Fields from last season's Survivor Panama XL Island. The creative designers behind Survivor have wowed us with so many great visuals. Remember that huge man-made skull we had on XL Island? We've already shown you the amazing tribal council ship. Now check out the other nautical themed delights the art department has conjured up. I'm Dan Monday. I'm one of the two production designers on Survivor 13. I've been on for the last uh, 12 seasons. Because of the, uh, the history of the British explorers here, we got to take on quite a naval exploration sort of theme, which is really different. We bring in probably 20 to 25 expats from Australia, the States, uh, England, as our main professionals. 
And this year, even Jeff Probst's brother Scott is part of the crew. A lot of them come through and they shine and they're very good at their own thing, local carvers, and they just take on roles of their own. But the Four Tribe scenario, which we touched on last season, has been is difficult in that it just requires everything twice as big. Rather than two tribes, you've got to build four of everything. I wouldn't give up working on Survivor for anything, I don't think. I actually enjoy it more and more each season. While those props are impressive, you couldn't have Survivor without, well, the Survivors, duh. With thousands of applicants and only a select few spots to fill, the Survivor casting department plays a huge role in the game every season. I'm Lynn Spillman. I'm the casting director for Survivor. I've cast every season. Casting Survivor, you watch a lot of videotapes. We get about 20 to 30,000 tapes each season. We have six people full-time going through, but at certain parts of the season in the process, we bring other people in to help us watch a couple days at a time just to get through everything that's here. We look for risk takers. We look for people that are, you know, have done stuff in their lives that would make them change up the game or do something exciting on the show. We look for people that are relatable, people that you root for, maybe people that you don't like, but it's giving them a, you know, a cross section of the country. I always think of that first episode when people are flipping through, you want them to stop. You want them to say, oh, wow, what's she about? Or, oh, look at him. You want that, you know, with so many stations and so many options and everything, you want them to stop and check it out. It's a lot of fun. It's really, it really is. It's a lot of fun hearing people's stories, getting to know hundreds and hundreds of people throughout each casting season. It's really fun. Later, ready. Go. you'll only see it here. It's a sneak peek of an actual challenge you'll see on Survivor this season. Plus, I was first born and I'm a personality A. When I say go, no exception. Meet the final tribe of castaways. That and more when Survivor Cook Island's preview returns. Welcome back to Survivor Cook Island's preview. I'm Suri Fields from Survivor Panama Exile Island. This year's big twist is splitting the contestants up by ethnicity. Reactions are pouring in over this controversial move. We've already heard from the experts, now it's your turn. So what do the viewers think about this hot button survivor issue? Well, TV Guide Channel hit the streets of Hollywood to find out. I don't think it's a healthy twist for the show. I think it was better when it was all about group efforts, when it was about you know working together no matter what race you are. You can have black, white, uh, Chinese on the same team. It doesn't matter. It shouldn't be uh, splitting them up like that. And me being multiracial, what do you do if you're that? If you're multi, you know, you can't be in Survivor. It's not a good, it's not a good thing to do. Might be interesting. So I don't know. It's good to try different things. So who knows, right? Might work out pretty good. I think it's okay, I guess, you know, it's variety, <laughs> yeah, more the merrier. I think they're kind of doing it to get more publicity because, you know, any publicity is good publicity, even though this is going to be probably be more negative than good. I think that people would be uh, more likely to stay loyal to a race versus having alliances with other people like we usually do. I definitely root for the Hispanics. They seem to have the most luck these days, and uh, I work with a bunch of Hispanic guys, so I figure I'll... I root for the home team, even though I'm Caucasian. They call surviving. If you want to survive, stick with your own race. Honestly, I think people are going to go with people they like. Doesn't really matter. I mean, in the end, you know, jerk's a jerk, and people are going to stay away from the jerks. Just ahead, meet the final five castaways in the running for the million dollars. And later, you won't want to miss TV Guide Channel's exclusive peek at an actual Cook Islands challenge. Don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Survivor Cook Island's preview. I'm Sari Fields from last season's Survivor. We've come to the final tribe competing in the Cook Islands. Now these five players range in age from 28 to 42 and include an outspoken attorney and a former refugee from Vietnam. Collectively, they're known as the Puka Puka Tribe. 36-year-old Jenny feels fit enough to take on her Cook Islands competition. I play competitive volleyball all year. Mentally, uh, I feel that I can do this game too. Even though I, I'm leaving a family, my husband and my 11-year-old son at home. But I would expect her to be around for a long time, and I would think that if she got in trouble, she would fight to stay in this game. Fashion merchandising director Brad already has a leg up in one critical aspect of the game. 
withholding important information. Before coming out, Brad succeeded in keeping his sexuality under wraps for years. Played football, co-captain of the football team, captain of the track team, dated the cheerleader in high school, dated the sorority girl in college, um, all the while in the back of my mind knowing that I was gay. I grew up a water baby. Um, I love to swim. Um, I love to fish, and uh, it's it's like second nature to me. So I'm excited, and I'm ready to rock and roll. You take a look at me with tattoos and long hair. The Vietnamese people automatically look at it. He's a cowboy, wild man. The only thing about cowboy is he's a lot. He's just he kind of invades your space a little. He wants to tell you something. He really wants to tell you about it. I live by my honor. What I say, go. No exception. Cowboy, if I had to guess, would be gone early. Attorney and former kickboxing instructor, Becky Lee says her game face is critical for her success in Survivor. I'm 28, I don't look 28. I have a baby face, and so they see someone who doesn't look very like judgmental. And I was first born, and I'm personality A, you know, also I have a little bit of that, that a lot of Asian cultures, like there's the mother has that fire, like she you know runs the household, and I have that. I like uh, physical competition, I like uh, intellectual puzzles, and there's nothing out there that combines those two elements like Survivor does. With a Yale doctorate, a compassionate nature, and a whole batch of imposing muscle, Yul Kwan is the type of renaissance man who has a great shot at winning the game. Yul could absolutely win this game. I'd be delighted if he did. He's a super likable guy. Coming up. Uh, I'll get ya. I really want to get out there. I love the challenges. I would love to, to find out what kind of challenges we have in store for this game. Well, we know. Stick around for an exclusive sneak peek of a real challenge when Survivor Cook Island's preview continues. Welcome back to Survivor Cook Island's preview. I'm Sari Fields from Survivor Panama Exile Island. As I know all too well, the challenges on Survivor are not easy. The producers managed to come up with incredible ways to test the mind and body. And season 13 will be no exception. TV Guide writer Shauna Malcolm took part in a test of a real Cook Islands challenge. And TV Guide channel cameras were on hand to catch all the action. Group squared off in a test run. Journalists from Us, Entertainment Weekly, People, In Touch, and TV Guide battled Survivor production staff in the Survivor Dream Team. Bragging rights at stake. We've got a lot of different press outlets. Drivers ready. Go! Shauna from TV Guide makes a big splash in the water. It was hot out there, and it wasn't easy. <laughs> Drive having the most trouble is Entertainment Weekly and TV Guide. And still, it's Entertainment Weekly, People Magazine, and TV Guide struggling. Here comes TV Guide. Three teamers. They're good. Now we have to disassemble it. Shauna needs a hand up over the mound. Shauna, her tribe actually came in second place. Well, it's going to be another amazing season of Survivor. Find out how the tribes react to the big twist and which castaway will in the year a million dollars richer. Check out all the drama Thursdays on CBS. For more info on Survivor, log on to tvguide.com. I'm Sari Fields. Thanks for watching. See ya.